Mm -hmm. um i feel like once you just start that you know you'll attract everything that you need to continue to do it so for sure just just start and to keep and keep going don't mm -hmm. give up because of things that happen to you mm, damn q baby you did that what up what up what up man it's your boy shy shy versus everybody podcast voice of detroit motherfucking podcast mvp in this motherfucker man It's your boy Shad. Shad vs. A Bite Podcast, episode 184. We got a, uh, another young Pontiac legend in the building. Gemini Baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Birthday June 12th. Ooh. She young. She might be 21, dog. That's her special year. 21 in the game and stuff. <laughs> she a business woman. Got her own lip gloss line. You know what I'm saying? Singer. You feel me? We got Lauren Nicole in the building. <laughs> Hello, how, how you, you feel? How you know a lot. Hey, you know, I try to do Whoa. a little research and stuff. You know, I try to separate myself. This is the best podcast in the city. Yeah, that's you dope. Some things I didn't even know. I'm yeah. So yeah, your birthday, well, you um, you're not too far from me. I'm June 21st. Okay. Yeah, so I'm like that borderline cancer Gemini. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I guess I'm two faced and crazy and sad. <laughs> it ain't like that. No, I feel you. Yeah, feel yeah, you. yeah. So how you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm excited to be here. That's what's up. That's what's up. I'm yeah. glad you uh decided to come. You know, a lot of people you send that message to, they don't respond back. Yeah, but you did. I had to. I've been like I said, I've been watching you for a while. I mm -hmm. respect the grind, and I'm just ready to network and collab. Sure. So for I'm sure. here. Now I did feel old when I found out you about to be 21. Like, oh my <laughs> god! So that means you were born what? Oh three? Yeah, bro. She said oh three. Oh <laughs> three? That's insane to say. Dang, that was, that's insane to hear. Cause I was born, <laughs> I'm 37, so it's like you're 37. Yeah, yeah. I'm old. I wouldn't have guessed. Yeah, dinosaur guessed. out here, in general, man. <laughs> man, I feel old. Every time I have somebody on the show, it's like they get younger and younger. Yes. Yes. And I usually don't let people under 21 come, but really? I did my research and you you a little different. Oh, thank so, yeah. you. Wow, yeah. I did not know that. For sure, for sure. Appreciate for sure. you. So if you're under 21, you're a special person. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, That's what's up. we start every show with Salute Me While I'm Here. A okay. lot of times we wait for people to pass away before we give them their flowers. Oh, wow. But it can't be an easy answer. It can't be your mom. Okay. I don't know if you... I don't think... You're not in a relationship. I did my research. But it can't... <laughs> you're right. You ain't got no kids either. So no, it no. can't be moms. It can't be nobody. It can't be no siblings. It got to be somebody out there. Easy answer. So you got somebody you want to send some love to? Um, oh, wow. That's a really hard question. You know. Um. <laughs> somebody I want to send love to. Can it be like... Does it have to be a specific person, or can it be like it can be whoever? People? As long as it ain't your, uh, as long as it's not your mama. Um, can I send a, <laughs> send message and encouragement to like all the girls and little girls yeah, trying sure. to become something? No, go ahead. Um, if you're trying to go for dreams and if you have something that you want to aspire to be, please do not give up and keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, do not let people limit you and um project their insecurities onto how far they think you can go. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, just keep going. Like if you're still living and breathing, you have blood flowing through your brain veins i said brain <laughs> <laughs> veins you still have the ability to become whoever you want to become so mm -hmm. i'm gonna give my flowers to everybody not even just girls anybody who's trying to conquer a dream because mm -hmm. it's hard see i'm talking about q that's why i say she would be a you know saying a good person on the show. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> now you. my salute is gonna go to detroit because uh <laughs> this, over this weekend we had a big concert uh little caesar's arena it was a uh, team mm -hmm. east side dope boy cash out if anybody know that whole history it was a little beef back in the day Ooh. and stuff like that. People didn't really get along. But mm. over the years, things got better. People started working together. They was able to throw out probably one of the biggest concerts in Detroit. Yeah. You know, they had uh, Boosie there, Yo Gotti, Young Jeezy, Meek Mill. Like, it was pretty dope. So it was good to see Detroit, you know what I'm saying, work together because, you know, we got so much history of beefing with each other. Yeah, yeah. So my salute is to the city of Detroit. Team Eastside, Doughboy Cash Out. If any of y'all want to come on the show, let me know. <laughs> Come on the show now. Now, uh, it's 2024. <laughs> we already mentioned this is your 21st year. Whew. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, but you know. But talk <laughs> about the year prior. Like, how was 2023 for you as an artist and oh, as a God. person? Um, 2023 was one of the most difficult years I've actually had musically. I almost gave music up. Mm -hmm. um, it just felt like I was in this toxic cycle of, like, trying something that just wasn't working out. Mm -hmm. And, like, granted, it was working out, but when you get into thinking about the things that aren't working out you kind of like dig yourself into a hole mm -hmm. and you'll start to think that you're not achieving anything because all you're focusing on is the bad stuff for sure so yeah. i feel like i fell into a hole of just focusing on the bad stuff when really like i i got my first three movie placements mm -hmm. on um That's dope. if i can't by mina monroe oh yeah she's my song block <laughs> yeah like and I, that's not something I sought out or anything. She found it, and I just found out that she used it oh, for sync licensing. So, and there was a couple other movies that got used in, um, and even just like losing myself to find myself again. I started like 
I don't know, just wallowing mm -hmm. in, in the funk. So mm -hmm. um, at the end of the year, I was like, girl, you had this is one of your best years because you got lost to get found again. Um, so, yeah, it was just really hard. So like, was, was things not moving quick enough for you for, as far yeah, as the music? Yeah, I feel like because I've been doing music for so long mm -hmm. like since I was 13 honestly like yeah. I started like just investing into my singing and mm -hmm. career and writing um and when you are an artist and when you have like you set like an almost unrealistic goals no, for, for sure. yourself I do too to this day yes yeah, <laughs> like I need to be Beyonce by the time I'm 18 yeah, for sure. and if I'm not then this is I'm failed yeah, yeah so um and I put so many high expectations on myself and so mm -hmm. much pressure and I'm, I can be a perfectionist so when I don't reach a goal by the time I thought it should look like yeah it's like you're failing but yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you can only trust god's timing mm -hmm. and i say now i'm so thankful that i didn't get what i want when mm -hmm. i wanted it because i was not ready for it oh yeah no for sure for so, sure i say a lot even with like interviews with certain people like yeah. i'm glad i didn't get that interview earlier because yes. i wouldn't been prepared yes you, you didn't have the saying? capacity or even the knowledge or experience yeah. to like understand that in that time being so is that something you want to focus on as far as like the music placements and movies because that's that's something that people don't really realize like you can make a lot of money like on tv shows commercials you can. movies you really can and even just getting that exposure like it, it introduces you as an artist to people that would have never heard you for sure if it hadn't gone on them yeah because there's a lot so. of movies i watch like damn who was that yeah you, you're gonna hit that shazam <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and like, be like, what okay. song is this <laughs> right exactly and i get i get honestly i was like how am i getting so many shazams i get like hundreds of shazams mm -hmm. a week mm -hmm. and i'm like oh you do have your song and movie that's probably for where it's from and yeah. so yeah it is definitely something that um i think is a great avenue mm -hmm. to use that's dope that's dope yeah. what about personal how was your how was the year for you personally um it was bad oh, <laughs> it was bad but good yeah yeah, 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 yeah. um i definitely i i'm very huge on mental health and i i have a lot of mental battles that i just struggle day-to-day -day. anxiety depression mm -hmm. intrusive thoughts racing thoughts ocd like there's just so many things that i've uh attained just growing up from my childhood trauma so mm. um yeah like when you get into those like deep wallowed like holes it mm. does have a mental toll on yeah. you that's yeah, why yeah. i was like i almost gave it up because it just no. felt like nothing was getting better for so. sure i definitely want to tap into that because I, like i said i did my research and stuff so i yeah. know a lot about you <laughs> <laughs> which i really appreciate that's really dope <laughs> but uh, before we get into that since it is 2024 we talking about last year what are some goals you set for yourself this year what you want to see yourself personally mm. you know what I'm saying and with the music side as well um i definitely want to just be more patient and like do better at letting go mm -hmm. i can like be so passionate about something that it's all i think about all day and mm -hmm. like it can become obsessive yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and like it's also a good thing because it's what keeps me driven and it keeps me like going mm -hmm. at the same time if you hold on to something you're not allowing the energy to come to you for sure so it's like i'm blocking my own blessings because i'm letting i'm yeah, holding on to yeah, it so tight yeah, yeah, yeah. so definitely just patience trusting god timing and really just keeping my head down and working and letting god do what he's gonna do mm -hmm. um and personally just like giving myself more grace I can yeah. be like really hard on myself oh, yeah, and it yeah. can cause like just self-destructive no, for sure, yeah. habits. I know. So yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah now I know, you know, cause I got a daughter, she, she's young though. My daughter only three years old. Oh. So I don't want her ever being in a relationship. So I know relationship, <laughs> you're 20. So I know that's out the picture for you right now. You should be just focused on music, yep. music yep. and life. Yep. That's it. Yeah, I'm going to tell my daughter that like, listen, hey. 25 that's when you do yeah it. <laughs> it's not worth it it's not i've been in the relationships and they just led me to darker holes mm -hmm. um ultimately i ended up in a better spot because it taught yeah. me lessons but yeah. it's not the funnest thing when you're trying to you know T live talk, life talk about that like young relationships young love because i remember like my little middle school girlfriend <laughs> i thought he was gonna get married and everything oh, like no for real <laughs> That's like what I feel like that's what our uh, family teaches us almost mm -hmm. like when you grow up in households they teach you the white picket fence they mm -hmm. teach you you're gonna get married to your first love yep, yep I just knew it like we was 13 and yep. 12 I was 13 she was 12 we're gonna be high school yep. sweetheart we didn't make it until we was 19 that's yeah. really impressive <laughs> that's I hope my wife impressive. ain't watching this but hey, I'm just talking about the old <laughs> right. days old days old days <laughs> yeah, so I'm like yeah we gonna get married yeah, for sure that's really cool I mean I think it's cause I mean I've seen it happen so many times and I think it does come from like the generation before us that was their thing mm -hmm. like they met in middle school yep, yep. and they together at 50 exactly exactly, so, exactly. they went through cheating everything and man, still together still, still fighting together. Yeah, for still sure. tearing each other up fighting yep. and still hate each other but still love each right. other right <laughs> yeah no I, I wasn't about that life after, mm -hmm. after my situation situations it, it just wasn't fun it really is and for me like when i got into the relationships it was me kind of trying to fill a void within myself mm -hmm. it was like me seeing all my friends get in relationships at yeah, like 12 so. and 13 <laughs> and i'm like oh, how come nobody like me exactly like, yeah that's funny so 
Yeah, it just, it wasn't worth it. It definitely led me, I think I lost like 40 pounds, no, not 40, 20 pounds in mm. like two weeks. Mm. And I was the smallest I'd ever been. I was depressed because the guy, you know how young men can be, they can be manipulative no, sure, and like try to sure. play with your heart. That's so. crazy. Yeah, I just always wanted to, yeah, that, that young love is funny. It is. You know, it's my, hilarious. My son, uh, he just turned 17, but mm. I remember his first little heartbreak. Oh. He was in Rome, laying down, wasn't get up. I'm like, boy, yes. get, come on, get up. Man. Ice cream, eating all the food <laughs> yeah. you can think of. I had to call his mom, like, hey, can you please call him and tell him to get up, man? Because <laughs> coming from me, I, I'm I'm not even soft enough. I'm like, hey man, get get your butt up. Yeah, yeah. If your mom was here, I'll say different words, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he, he laying down, head hurt, hungry, like, man, come on, bro. Get get your butt it up. It literally it makes you like you feel like your world is over and it's really yeah. not. It's no. not over at all. It's it just do. starting. It do, it do, it do. Because <laughs> I, I I remember my little heartbreak. I'm on the couch sitting there every day like <laughs> Dang, like, like oh, yeah. I'm never gonna love again. Yeah, yeah, ever, ever, ever. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then it's like after that, I know a lot of people go down this path of like, I'm gonna dog everybody I'm with next. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like that is what kind of causes like people to be heartbreakers. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, dog everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> now, uh, music, yeah, and relationships. Mm -hmm. We, I just want to speak on this real quick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. How many people use music to try to get? on you like try to talk to you like hey let's work on music yeah. hey you're beautiful like you know what i'm saying like i know you go through that oh everybody go through that mm, it, okay so <laughs> thankfully i do bring my mom everywhere i go for sure but there has been like like i i won't even tell them that my mom's yeah. coming sometimes because like, i want to see your intentions <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like um they, they definitely do like if they want to do a studio session and you can kind of like feel the vibes when somebody's reaching out mm -hmm. to you like if you already sending me hard eyes and then you find <laughs> exactly. it's like and you ask me to do a song with you <laughs> hey, i know what tip you <laughs> right i'm like and which is okay i think you can come compliment somebody yeah. but you can kind of feel when somebody's trying to come at you and mm -hmm. it's like they'll use the music to get to you and it's mm -hmm. like i'm just i feel like if we're gonna work it needs to be strictly business mm -hmm. like i don't do the whole mixing business with pleasure thing yeah, yeah for sure um for and, sure. A, and a lot of men that, that i've ran into they they like get mad at you i t there was one dude that told me like yeah because you know tupac declined the feature from uh michael jackson and look who he became i'm like you're not tupac like, yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah, that's funny, man. so and i'm not even saying that to discredit his work i yeah. thought he was a dope artist but it's like i'm not comfortable meeting with you because you've already tried to come yeah, at me get at so you. many yeah. times mm -hmm. he's even sent me inappropriate like pictures oh, yeah. and it's like dude you're yeah. about to get blocked yeah, he's tripping okay no, dude's funny man yeah. that's funny yeah see mom coming with that thing like <laughs> but see i already knew you could ask my producer i told him i said looking at your uh you know what I'm saying looking at your social media and stuff like that i'm like i bet you her mom be with her she does i already knew it everywhere and i think it's important as a young woman especially in a, a, a field that is so men heavy like mm. it's like a lot of men around you have to have even whether it's your mom your best friend you have to have sure. somebody with you because yeah. you don't know what environments you're walking exactly into. it's like you don't know we could be crazy people right you know, you know? Yeah. and it's like you need that protection no you do around you do you do you do now uh speak sp speak on that I, like <laughs> i said i did you know saying see that you and your mom got a close relationship mm -hmm. and stuff like that speak on and i know i heard you know saying stuff in the, in, the, in the music about your mom referencing her yeah talk about your mom and the importance of her and having like somebody that's right there besides you i think it's really important like the times i was talking about like giving up on music like mm -hmm. she's the one like she believes in me more than i believe in myself sometimes mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. like she literally is the one like when i broke i broke down in the bathroom just like crying and i was like mom i can't do this anymore and she was like if you don't get your butt up she's like yeah. we've worked too hard so, you've gotten too far to give up now and that's what the enemy wants you to think he yeah. wants you to give up because you have a purpose to fulfill For sure. so she kind of just keeps me centered and reminded of like my purpose and the mm. path that god's taking me on and like when i get you know weary mm. she kind of centers me yeah. back and yeah. kind of just almost like it's like my team but like she's my team For sure, yeah. <laughs> he's my mental good so that i can do what i'm supposed to For sure, no. shout out to uh to mama lauren shout out to <laughs> mom man yeah, i don't i would up. not be here without her i ain't gonna cap no for sure for sure now early on you spoke on <laughs> mental health and, and stuff like that mm -hmm. and i know you uh 10 years in therapy you know yes what made you even go i know you you, you know that was like what 11 years old or whatever. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what made you go and did you have doubt about going there first um yeah so my mom got me into therapy shout out to moms again mm -hmm. um i was going through a lot in my childhood her and my dad were going through a lot like and i was just watching them go through mm -hmm. just 
traumatic events um and in school i was having a hard time adjusting and then she had got sick she had four brain surgeries so she was oh, dying yeah. and um that's a lot for a 10 year old like your dad i mean my dad don't have a close relationship so that was very toxic i definitely got a question about that later on oh yeah i got all the, <laughs> all the answers for yeah. you with that too um so yeah it was like i she was dying it's like i don't have i felt like i was gonna lose her and i only have him left mm. um so yeah, she was. She saw that the inter- internal battle I was starting to fight and the things I was going through. She was like, "I think you need to go to therapy." Sure, and I was yeah. like, "I don't want to go to therapy." Yeah. <laughs> so, um, she, she really did kind of like force it. But and I used to be so mad at her. I was mm. like, "I don't want to go to therapy." Yeah. Like I used to honestly not even want to talk to her after, because in my household I was taught that you like not from her from my dad. You're not mm. allowed to talk about your emotions and yeah. that emotions are weak and that like yeah. crying is sensitive or emotional. It, yeah. So um. I'm thankful for it now, though, because it really has taught me how to regulate and has taught me that, like, emotions are actually probably the bravest, strongest things you can express and mm-hmm. talk about. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, it was a battle. I did not for like sure. her <laughs> yeah, for, <sure. laughs> for a minute. I'm like, I'm not talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> what would life be like without therapy? I probably wouldn't be here. Mm. I really wouldn't. I Like I said, I still, to this day, being in a therapy, I just had a breakdown before I came here about mm. my internal mental battles. Yeah. Um, the the battle of the mind intrusive thoughts and like race it just it can take over you mm. um and com- sometimes it can feel overwhelming so without those tools i i wanted to just not be here oh, and the man. only thing that kept me here is her and mm. like i didn't have the means to do it like yeah. the courage to take myself out but mm. i really would not and now, music saved me for sure now what about the ones that you know going through what you was going through at the time and but they can't afford therapy. You know what I'm saying? It costs too much. What, what What's your advice, you know what I'm saying, for those, for those girls or young I'd men? I'd say even if you don't have the means to get therapy, definitely just find someone to talk to. Mm-hmm. Like whether that's your friend, whether it's your brother, your mom, family member, whatever that is for you, like talk to somebody. Because a lot of us feel um, like we're going to be judged mm-hmm. or feel like it's weak if we do talk to somebody. So I feel like we kind of just suppress it and internalize what we feel. Mm-hmm. But just talk. And if you can't talk, write it down. Yeah, like that's sure. where music came for mm-hmm. came from for me. Like if when I didn't have the words to say, writing it down and turning your pain into art and making it something consumable for somebody else is healing. Yeah. No, for sure. So yeah. just finding healthy ways to cope, I think yeah. is. I was not thinking like you route. at twenty. <laughs> <laughs> not one bit. I'm, done. <laughs> I'm thinking about twenty. So at yeah, twenty, I had a one year old son. Wow. Yeah, I was, and I was just thinking reckless. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking care of my son for sure. He came yeah. first, but Aww. at that reckless time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Doing demon time. I was, <laughs> I was demon time. Yeah, 2021, 20, I was not thinking about that. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it, it took me to get older to realize, you know what I'm saying, just... Yeah. It's real life stuff. Yeah. Back then, yeah. I'm thinking I'll take care of my son. I work, but mm-hmm. I was just thinking about fun, fun, fun. Yeah. That's it. I yeah. wasn't thinking about no life stuff until I got in my mid twenties. Wow. Yeah, but 2021. Yeah, this dude, he was, <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was in my family. I was just thinking reckless things, seeing him do reckless stuff. Wow. My, my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like so, it was his reckless time. Yeah, right? reckless time. No, I get it. What was your first breakthrough? Like, what was the first time you actually discovered something as far as going to therapy? Like, like, dang, I didn't realize that about myself or um, about this situation. Definitely, um, I want to say, I think it was when I was like 13. Mm -hmm. I had been going for three years at that point, and I was going through a lot of stuff in school and just emotionally, um, and really figuring out I had really bad daddy issues, Mm -hmm. and figuring out that that relationship stemmed um, or or created a lot of my internal issues. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it kind of, it just made me be aware, and it helped me kind of like go through life differently. I feel like I was, like I said, on like more a self destructive path. Mm-hmm. And um, it just helped me be more aware and to not project onto people and to kind of just be in a state of self reflection all the time. For sure. So that I could heal yeah. and move on. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like your therapist should be the same race, same gender? Um, I feel like it all really just depends on your comfort level. For me, like, I don't. I don't put a like how it should look like. I feel like if you know what you're doing and mm-hmm. you can help, me, that's all I care about. For sure. Um, now it does help for some people. Like some people, like if you're black, they prefer a black woman or a black man, um, mm-hmm. just because they feel like they can relate, relate. to you yeah, and your yeah, experiences. Yeah. So that is a thing too. Yeah. But um, I've had I've had black, I've had white, mm-hmm. I've had mixed, I've, yeah. I, and and they all offered. I've had young, I've had old. Yeah. They all offered something different. To me, did, so. you, did you ever have a therapist like, oh no, you full of it? Okay, I, I ain't. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow I'm out. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I definitely have to. Some of them, um, it was more like gossip sessions. It felt like yeah. it was like they just wanted your tea. Mm-hmm. Like, girl, what's the tea this week? <laughs> and they just sat back and ate their popcorn. <laughs> yeah, just chill out. Like, yeah, crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, for real. So, 
some of them might, and that's okay too. I had to realize like some people think like when you go to therapy that the first one is gonna be it. It's like mm-hmm. no, therapy is just like a relationship you find yeah, with somebody. You gotta find the right one. Yeah, it yeah. has to mesh. They have to understand your specific issues, mm-hmm. now, um, and that could be hard. What do you say to the ones that believe like people use mental health as an excuse? Like some people scream mental health, but you know, saying that because that's the thing now. What do you what do you say to those people who don't even like oh they, they just using that excuse they ain't really going through anything like what do you say to those people? Um, I'd say use your common sense <laughs> 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 because that is a thing. Some people do like there is like people that play victim mm-hmm. and are do not want to be accountable and not don't want to be aware of the things that they do. So mm-hmm. in order to dodge accountability, they they use that so that people can feel bad for them. But I feel like it's all in knowing who you're dealing with mm-hmm. and um like. Do, don't basically have grace for people like from knowing who they are know is this their character they, yeah. it really goes back to character so mm-hmm. judge it based off of who you know them to be like yeah. do they usually just play a victim yeah, or do yeah, they yeah, really yeah. need help for sure so yeah, yeah, but common yeah. sense isn't so common all yeah. the time no not at all people like have told, told me I've done that yeah <laughs> it's like I'm I pride myself on being self reflective so if I'm crying for help I really need it yeah 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 so, so, like you said common sense ain't really you know it's people ain't common. got it yeah, <laughs> people out here man like, yeah, crazy man. yeah they really <laughs> are <laughs> When did you realize it was okay to be different? Um, just recently, actually. <laughs> um, I'm I'm actually dropping a song called "I Don't Fit and I Stand Out." Um, mm-hmm. and it was another night I had a breakdown with my mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she kind of brings out these breakouts, cries that I have, but it it almost releases a new like yeah. level of awareness. It's in like me. y'all crying together, like yeah, yeah, like, oh! for real. Like we just we. I promise <laughs> no, you, before okay. I got here, I was sobbing. I yeah. cried for two hours last night, just yeah. sobbing about just stuff in general. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I want to say maybe it was like. Was that like November, October ish? It was like November, October ish. Mm-hmm. Um, I I didn't realize I had a lot of suppressed emotions. Mm-hmm. As much as I express, I also can like suppress a lot the things that have hurt me the most. Mm-hmm. Um, and she kind of like reminded me of like how I didn't feel like I didn't fit in when I was younger and I was ashamed of it mm-hmm. and I felt different from everybody else. But now I feel empowered by it because mm-hmm. I feel like being different is what makes you unique and it's what makes you stand out. And mm-hmm. if we were like everybody else, then what would be cool about like living? Yeah. No, for sure, for sure. I remember a young lady I was sp- speaking to when mm-hmm. I was like 15, 16. Yeah. I was on phone where she was like you different I'm like what you mean like, you actually want to have a conversation i'm like huh yeah like, yes. i'm asking her things and stuff trying to figure out who she is and she used to do just trying to be like hey can i come over can i do this with you like yes. I, was, I, I was too scared anyway but yeah, yeah, time, yeah. Like, so i'm just trying to hey what's That's your favorite tv show different. like tv show like like yeah. you don't want to come over and yeah. you know try something i'm like uh i'm a little scared right now but yeah which is so cool because that is usually the story sure, like yeah. they usually just want to come over link i'm like if don't tell don't ask me to link yeah, i don't no. want Link, <laughs> link, and Bill. Right, please. <laughs> if you had to get this last year a movie title, what would it be? Ooh, um, let me see. It's always a stumper. Dang, because <laughs> there's just so many things that yeah. um happened. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess kind of how I said earlier. Um, maybe Lost and Found. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, yeah I like lost that one. And found. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> now, uh, what's something that you f- still fighting through to be a better artist or a better person that still may be holding you back from getting to that next level? I really just think my my passion is, and it sounds crazy mm-hmm. because most people be like, passion is good. It keeps you driv- like driven. Mm-hmm. But like I said, when I, I'm so passionate that it's all I can, like sometimes just all I think about, and it mm-hmm. kind of becomes this unhealthy mm-hmm. kind of like thing. You think so? Yeah, because. Yeah. It keeps me in a state of I don't have it. And it's yeah. like you really, like, you have to think in the mindset of you already have it. You're just walking towards it. Mm-hmm. So that's how I get into those states of like I'm not doing anything yeah, or yeah. I haven't achieved anything because I'm looking at it as, I, as I'm stuck or something. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm growing yeah. and it's a constant evolution. Now, are you thinking that way just because the deal ain't came or just because you haven't had like that breakout <clears throat> song or album or anything yeah, like that? 100%. Yeah, 100%. It's like I'm looking, and that's another thing. I used to, um, kind of like almost despise my accomplishments Mm -hmm. like or what is it called minimalize them Mm -hmm. as if they weren't huge and i'm I'm really learning to understand that all moments are big moments and that that moment is just a big moment of all the big the little moments that you've had and Mm -hmm. the big moments that you're creating so 
But I mean, I'm even looking at it like you twenty, you about to be twenty one. You got two albums out already. Yeah, it's like some people ain't even dropped the first one. They call it, yeah, <laughs> and they call yourself an artist. Like I tell this dude this all the time. Like I had people come on the show and with a single or with an EP, and it's like what what what's going on? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You advertise yourself for this one moment, but then you not stay stay building. Yeah, like what you I'm right. seeing that you consistently. You know what I'm saying? Showing things on, on social media, if that's a, a remake of a song or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You're doing something. Yeah. So that's an accomplish, accomplishment within itself. Right. Because Thank a lot you. of people yeah. don't. And your album, what, you, 21 songs? Mm -hmm. The first one was 17. Mm -hmm. So it's like people ain't dropping seven <laughs> songs. <let laughs> right. You You're know right. what I'm saying? So right. to me, that's a, that's a you Huge know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wouldn't even. Think like that because you you still young you still yeah. building so it's still you still got plenty of time. Yeah, you're right, and that's yeah. the thing too. I get caught. I'm like I feel like I'm always like running out of time. Yeah. That if I don't get it now, then I'm never gonna get it. Exactly. So, now when you say like not not you know like I say I got a lot of people on the show that you know they they do things but they don't really do things. So I think you I think you were heading the right direction. Thank you. you know I appreciate it. I yeah, really yeah, do. I wouldn't even be down on myself <laughs> if I was you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> now, you. Now what's something that you figure out like dang I didn't know I was even capable of doing this. Um. I want to say one of my biggest fears used to be performing in front of people. Mm -hmm. um, and that is kind of what also held me back from pursuing artistry. I used to like feel like paralyzed yeah. when I had to sing in front of one person. <laughs> so, um, yeah, when I started performing in the recept, like the, the reactions I would get mm. and um, just becoming more confident in it is something that I didn't think I would be capable of. Mm. Like I've seen it in my head, but it just felt so scary. Because <laughs> I... It, Honestly, like that's how I said, childhood trauma really does haunt you because it was like I wanted acceptance from the crowd and if I wanted to be good enough and mm -hmm. I didn't know if I was good enough to yeah. be that. So no, for sure. Proud of myself for conquering yeah. that because it's yeah. scary. Yeah, <laughs> back when I wanted to be an artist, I wasn't too good, I guess, because I'm, oh. I'm doing I'm a podcast now. But <laughs> that was scary, like like being in front of people, like yes. no matter if it was one or a hundred. It's so yeah. scary. I do not like people looking exactly. at me. Exactly, like oh like, shoot, don't look at yeah. me. Yeah, then you can't perform with your head down. Yeah, so you, gotta, you gotta make eye contact. You exactly. gotta interact. Yeah, we gotta be able to move a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to have stage presence. And I used to be like, that's how I knew this is my purpose. Because they always say the things that scare you the most is what you're supposed to do. I was mm -hmm. telling my mom, I'm like, I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. Like, I didn't sign up to be an artist. It's just a calling that yeah, I feel sure. spiritually. So mm -hmm. I just have to push through it. And yeah. at the end of the day, how my many... I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. How um, many shows have you done? Um. Oh, my God. I, I lost count. Oh, shoot. Damn. Oh, so you're good now. You're a pro. Yeah. yeah. I, I've become very good at it. Yeah. Thank God. I feel like there's, of course, <laughs> room for improvement. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's... God trained me. He yeah. he gave, gave me the opportunities to get better at it. What conquered sure. that fear though, as far as like being out there showing yourself and performing in front of people? Like what conquered? What, what finally you got over that hurdle? Like all right, I'm good. Really, just getting out there and doing it. Mm -hmm. Like not making any excuses. And like I pray before every performance, and mm -hmm. I say, God, give me the ability to do what I can't do. And mm -hmm. he, it's almost like an outer body experience. Like I trained my mind to think like it's not you going up on stage. Yeah, for sure. It's like an alter ego version yeah, of yeah, you yeah, that yeah, is confident yeah. in you know. Mm -hmm. is not shy at all because real me i'm like yeah yeah yeah. but yeah. um yeah just i have to just get out of my head and like become somebody else to do yeah, it yeah and yeah that's yeah. it's really cool when you get up there and do no, it no that's dope but it's almost like blacking out yeah. <laughs> what's your day-to-day -day life away from music like what bring you fun and joy um that's so funny mm. because music <laughs> <laughs> i like don't we were just talking about this my mom was like you need to like because that's the thing i don't really have a balance mm -hmm. like she's like you, you're young you still need to be like youthful and like go have fun with exactly. your friends i don't think about hanging out with yeah, people i don't music 100 percent. literally yeah. like i don't like talking on the phone i don't like doing anything if it's not adding value to where i could be mm -hmm. which is kind of it's like i said it's good but it's bad because i'm you can lose yourself yeah, in yeah, trying to sure. just focus on that mm -hmm. so um i'm working on that yeah. so i can't really tell you right <laughs> now i'm gonna try to figure it out yeah no, that's, that's cool that's cool <laughs> hey but hey you locked in yeah you got tunnel vision yes yeah, yes that's for what's sure <laughs> worst advice and best advice you received oh um best advice i've received is to like not care about when any anybody thinks about you mm -hmm. and kind of how i said earlier to not let anybody limit you mm -hmm. um i i feel like it's easy to listen to people's opinions or people's like what they want for you for you or see for yourself and yeah. they don't see your visions that god gives you mm -hmm. um worst advice Hmm. To t it's funny because taking like somebody told me to just take risks. Mm -hmm. I think risks are cool um, to a degree. Yeah. But they can also be kind of like toxic. <laughs> no, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Just, just like, do it. Jump in. Right. Yeah. And it's like some things you have to think about before you do it. So oh, no, probably you do. that. <laughs> you, do, you do. You do. You do. You gotta put a little bit of thought into right, it. Right. A little bit. Don't be <laughs> impulsive. Yeah. 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 Now you are coming up 
you'll officially be an adult in June. Yes. But what 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 you feel like was your first adult decision that you made so mm. far? Like like wow, like I'm I'm really growing up in life. Oh man, that's a really hard question. I try. I can't. That's <laughs> great. Yeah, that's that's a. I don't. I really can't. I don't even know if I could tell you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just honestly, choosing up to get up to go to work every day, I guess, paying mm-hmm. bills. It's Maybe definitely that's some, it. yeah. It's definitely some adult things to do. Like. Yeah, paying bills is not fun. I hate it. Oh my god! I want gotta, my money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and things are getting higher and higher. Like, bro, man, I'm like, can y'all at least pay us more to make up for what exactly. we gotta pay for? You need a second job to go to the grocery store. <laughs> man, man. Speaking of grocery, I got some bread yesterday, a loaf of bread, <laughs> and when I opened it up, I was kind of, I was sad because oh. of the, the bread. Every piece of bread had a hole in it. And I'm not talking about like a uh, 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 what's saying. Like, I'm talking about. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm like, hey man, this costs too much money, man. <laughs> so when you said grocery, what? that's the first thing I thought about was this bread I bought yesterday. Man, that's I'm a, ridiculous. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, send my producer the uh, the picture so he can <laughs> insert it. it. In <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you say you that's that yeah, that's paying bills like once you oh. realize you wanna move out your parents' house, but once you finally do, you like, Oh my god. For real. Yeah. I, I told him I said, I don't know how because I still live with my mom. I said, I don't know how people at like my age in this economy are functioning on their own. Yeah. Because it feels it's impossible. Terrible. Like it's everything terrible. is a bill nowadays. Yeah. No, every goddamn <laughs> thing is a bill. Like, like, come on. It costs to do everything. Everything. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, stay young, people. Stay young. For real. <laughs> I used to be like, I can't wait to grow up. I see what they're talking about yeah, now. Yeah, we, yep, that's the phone, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so we, my granddad's an older dude, so. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, we, the last time you cried, you mentioned, um, mm-hmm. was yesterday. This, this morning. This morning. Actually, yeah. What was the reason behind it? Um... <sighs> Intrusive thoughts. I struggle with really bad intrusive thoughts and um, mm-hmm. like OCD racing thoughts mm-hmm. and anxiety. It's really just a form of anxiety mm-hmm. when I feel out of control. Like when my life is feeling like mm-hmm. out of control. I, it's, you know how like most people who look for control, they try to control others. Yeah. I kind of try to control like myself or like okay. things that happen to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can put me into this toxic cycle in my mind where I'm like battling just like just the craziest things like yeah. you know like how there's like an angel and a devil on yeah it, for sure yeah. and it feels like he's always winning yeah, almost. yeah, yeah. all and the time yeah and it's like that's been really hard for me to fight growing up because it feels like it becomes overwhelming and like mm. you can't control it and sometimes I feel like my anxiety controls me versus mm. me having control over now, it now do you feel like that can get in the way of you being an artist yeah definitely yeah. um it, it because it in the, the whole thing it does is it, it um distracts your focus mm. so it can make it hard to function honestly i was just mm. talking i'm like i think i need some help because yeah. this ain't it no more yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah it does it does and i mean thankfully i know i think music is the only way also at the same time to help me calm it down mm. and that's when i go to writing or listening mm. to my songs i just balled out balled my eyes out to the songs i wrote called yeah. black butterflies because mm. i have black butterflies people look at like butterflies as cute and pretty mm. but it's like that's just a cute anxiety but like mm. i have dark anxiety mm. that feeds my fears and yeah it just grows what's the longest or point in your life that you was dealing with mental uh health that was really like messing with you bugging with bugging you and stuff like what was the um, longest stint that you had to, like dealing with that i want to say 2020 to 2022 mm-hmm. um that's when i had wrote the 17 project i had gained my virginity got ghosted we were in mm-hmm. a relationship and my dad abandoned me at 17 mm-hmm. like at the same time like i got ghosted by a guy and my dad yeah so that really took me down a really like dark path because mm-hmm. it just left, it left me feeling very broken very worthless very like unvaluable mm-hmm. um and it was a really hard hole to get out got get out of mm-hmm. i started emotionally eating really bad yeah. um in my room eating mm-hmm. um, <laughs> tearing it up just didn't want to go anywhere my room was cluttered i was just in a bad space so yeah, so you really said you said boyfriend, virginity, and your father at the same. Yeah, so did time. you feel like God? Yeah, you really betrayed me. Like y'all ain't gave you something that yes. that's precious to me and stuff yeah. like that. Like, yeah, I like waited on purpose because I valued that so mm-hmm. much, and I was always taught like that's a gem. Like yeah. you don't just give that to anybody. So yeah. I thought what me and this dude had was like yeah. I'm like we yeah. didn't earn this. You yeah. know, like <laughs> we this is what it's about to be. Yeah. And then he, when he got it, he kind of just slowly yeah. backed up from me. And that's bo- yeah, 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 that's see, yeah, you make it. Scary with my daughter. I'm like, yeah. Please stay three, please. Yeah, no, for real. It is. It's scary. Yeah. It is. Now, when you talk, I come question. You talk to your mom. Do you talk to her before or after? 
And like, what was that conversation like? Um, talk to her about like, like losing losing your virginity. Oh, okay, yeah. So my mom has always been um very vocal with mm-hmm. me since I was a kid, and I think that's kind of why I'm so able to like talk about things now. Because mm-hmm. she's always like kind of like gave me game since I was yeah. a kid at the level of my age capacity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, told yeah, yeah. me stories she's been through so that I didn't have to go through it. Mm-hmm. So she kind of she kind of felt that I was ready to, to mm-hmm. go do that. So she started kind of like, so if Preparing, you yeah, you yeah. know when to do this, make sure you use protection. Make mm-hmm. sure you yeah, do this. Make sure, sure you're ready. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, she it's crazy. She just had a gut feel. She was like, I just had a gut feeling you're you're gonna go do this. Yeah. So in case you are, let me give you yeah. get your hip. A B C yeah. Yeah. And then I I actually did talk to her after, which is so funny because people are like, You talk to your mom about your virginity and like yeah. losing it? And yeah. I'm like, Yeah, I mean, see, yeah, see, not, both uh, both my parents are deceased, but I remember oh, like I'm my sorry. dad I'm gonna it's okay. My dad passed when I was uh thirteen. Oh, so of God. course those conversations I had to have about sex and girls was with my mom. Mm. So it's like <clears throat> people was like, You talk to your mom about that? Like who, who, who else? else <laughs> like about? my my older brother, he he in college and stuff, and I'm like, this is the person right here. I'm like, who knows better than the woman? I'm trying. <laughs> right, right, right. No like, facts. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I like girls. She's she used to be a girl. <laughs> She's a woman now, but hey, let me talk to her about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, hey, I, that was the best advice. And my son, uh, he's 17, so he's going through all that stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm happy that he's having he's having conversations with me. Yeah. Because you know, yes. Uh, especially a boy I, don't wanna, I, I ain't talk to him right yeah. right right right. and you so, want your kids to come mm-hmm. to you because you my mom always says I'd rather you I tell you than somebody off the street tell you and give mm-hmm. you like the wrong bad stuff. advice yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. great that you guys have the relationship no for sure he came to me like with, with certain things I'm like oh okay this, yeah. is, real. this is real yeah alright this is between me and you you ain't got to tell your mom right, like, right. we gonna keep, keep this between it. us that's yeah. dope I love that cause so then much. he gonna be like oh you gonna just tell now I can't trust you now exactly and you wanna build that trust of a safe space in mm-hmm. a no judgment zone that's great so what's something that you wanted to be that you never told anyone that like, I wanted to be yeah like for me I wanted to be a tap dancer when I was little what yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, okay but never happened we were, <laughs> that's actually really cool yep. I would've never guessed that yep yep a tap dancer and a, and a, and a wrestler Wow. Yeah, I was a I was a wrestling head back in the day. Wow, that's so, really dope. Yeah, yeah. So what's wow. something that you wanted to be that you never really told? It could be for um, you wanted to be that for a month, a year, mm-hmm. but it was something that was short lived that you didn't tell nobody. Um, I used to want to be a lawyer when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I used to kind of just be like passionate about like I don't know like um just being vocal. I feel like I'm a very <laughs> vocal yeah, vocal sure. person, so I used to think that would be cool. Um, mm-hmm. And an actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sure. want to be an actress, like actually really bad, but it's one of the things I'm kind of scared to yeah, try. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see you. Is that something you, right now? You little Tubi roll, whatever. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah no, and it's crazy because I know people who like do the Tubi movie thing, and they mm-hmm. said like, if I want to try, so I, I might. That's that might yeah. be something I want to conquer in 2024. Sure. So if that if, hypothetically, uh, a script is right here. What would be your your idea role that you want to start in, like as far Ooh. as your first movie? I because me, I want to be third number three. Ooh, okay. Just, 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 just take me out the game. Just, yeah, I'm yeah. just right there, like, hey, put that shit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Just a little small, little oh thirty second God. role, whatever. Uh, you gonna be a, a wife, a mistress, a, a lawyer, like you said? Hmm. Like, what what you want to be? I def I don't know. Maybe I I kind of like always fantasize about being like. You know, like the little high school movies where mm-hmm. there's like a little clique and there's like the main girl who <laughs> has sure. this like, I don't know, tragic love story mm-hmm. or like she's like trying to find herself and she yeah. has the best friend and the gay best friend. I don't know. <laughs> you got <laughs> the whole little thing right the there. The whole vibe kind of going. Hey, Thomas Harris, write your script, man. <laughs> yes, please do. I, I think that would be cool. Kind of like a role that would kind of like explain kind of how my life has been mm-hmm. almost like mm-hmm. trying to find yourself. And, For sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you had to tell someone about yourself only using or a song or an album, mm. what would that song or album be? Like you just press play and this is Lauren the Code. <sighs> Ooh. Maybe um Destiny's Child. Mm-hmm. Can I use this, their song? Go ahead. Um, I'm a survivor. For sure, for sure, for sure. For I like that. sure. I have survived so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, that I feel like could have took me out, but I'm still standing. So mm-hmm. I definitely live by just like not letting your trauma and the things that have happened to you define you and to for keep sure. going. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Would you put that as an album that changed your life? Um, yeah, I would say so. I mean, I wasn't like he- like it because it came out. I really listened to it when I was younger, so I mm-hmm. didn't understand it. So mm-hmm. I want to say like me getting older, it's more so changed like mm-hmm. how I view things. So mm-hmm. yeah, I guess you could say yeah. changed changed it a little bit. That's for what's sure. So, now. We get our game, like you said, you get your game from your mom. Who was the people or, or artists that you was liking just what your mom was playing in the house or whatever? When she make a pancake or she cooking it, she yeah. playing music. Like, who was the people that you listen to just and liking just based off your mom's? 
Definitely Beyonce. I don't play Beyonce a lot. Um, mm. Keisha Cole, mm. um, Monica, Brandy. Mm. Um, yeah, I love Brandy. Yeah. Brandy, I love you. <laughs> yeah, she, she eats. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, for sure. I love Brandy. She's, her voice is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, Latoya Luck, she used to be, what is that song? Swing, better, better, better. <laughs> <laughs> she used to like put the music videos on in the living room, and I used to just be tearing it up, dancing to it, mm-hmm. Sweet Dreams, um, Beautiful Nightmares, mm-hmm. I Guilty Pleasure, I yeah. Ain't Go. I used to be tearing it up. Man, so, for yeah, sure. those have been, uh, mainly Beyonce, though, has been my main like inspiration, mm-hmm. just like with her work ethic. Yeah. She's always inspired me to just like heavily. For just sure. go for what I want to go for. I've always been jealous of people that can sing. Really? Heck yeah. <laughs> I always envision myself being like, you know, that Chris Brown and Yo when he chased behind a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like I always like, damn! I wish I could sing, man. That's a cheat code when it comes to the man, dudes. Man, you can be whatever as long as you can sing, girl. Oh, you can sing. You can sing. Oh, but yeah, man. the opportunities just become mm, yeah so limitless for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the ones that can sing. I'm hating on y'all, but shout out to y'all. <laughs> said, I'm hating on y'all, but <laughs> now, talk about growing up. You from Pontiac? Mm-hmm. Who was in the crib? How was it like growing up as a as a young? Oh, well, you young, but a young, yeah. young. <laughs> um. So I I feel like I used to go to my grandma's house a lot. Like mm-hmm. um and my and my grandpa he played a, a huge part in my life when Shout I was a to kid. Grandparents. Yeah, he he died when I was nine, and that that's actually when my anxiety officially started when he died. Mm. Um, but it used to just be like really fun. Like me and him would just spend so much time together. He'd drop me off mm. after um or pick me up from school, or he'd wait for me to get off the bus, mm-hmm. and I would hang out with my cousins, and they always have, like, little apple pies ready for me, so <laughs> I feel like it was just the time to be a kid yeah, before, for sure. like, real world, like, like life things started to, you know, mm-hmm. I, before I became aware of them, it used to just be fun, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I, I miss that. <laughs> no, sure. You got uh, siblings, or is it just you? Yeah, I have a half-brother on my dad's side. Mm-hmm. Um, he's special needs, so mm-hmm. that's been... Um, Definitely something that well, actually, a lot of people don't really know about me that mm-hmm. he's special needs. Yeah, I knew and, it. I was kind of... Oh, okay. <laughs> he's like, I know that. <laughs> um, so yeah, me and him weren't the closest growing up, um, mm-hmm. just from family issues with my dad and stuff. Of but course, um, yeah. we recently became closer. He actually he um he died and came back to life. It was mm-hmm. the craziest thing. His heart oh. stopped and they had to resuscitate him, and he mm-hmm. came back like almost a little bit more like n- more normal than mm-hmm. he was. Yeah. So um, what's yeah. his special need? Was like was. Okay, you have to ke- tell me the name. Oh, okay. Propionic acidemia. Oh, yeah. Propionic acidemia. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. so, my uh, my brother in law he uh artistic a little bit. So, oh, wow. But it's like it's it's kind of it's mild. So he functioning and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Like, yeah. But like when and that's it, the thing, it has so many different yeah. levels to it. But I used to tell like her parents like, hey, let let him live. He cool. Like he good. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> like, like sometimes he try to hold on tight. Like <laughs> hey, he good. Like let yes. him let him come out. Let him chill and stuff. Like he, you got he cool. To. He in college now. He uh first year what? in college at school crab college. So. Yeah, like, I like, love live. seeing that. Yeah, I, I understand of, as a parent, you probably like a little concerned, but yeah. at the end of the day, hey, he he good. hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. And, and that thing. level of protection, it, it's almost like they you can treat them like they are not a human being. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like you do have to give them the leisure to do because mm-hmm. they're they're normal, just like us. Mm-hmm. Just like us, they just have different circumstances. Yeah, because so. with him, I see like sometimes like. If he he possessive over some things, and mm. if he in the room, he in the room. Hey, leave me alone. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, like I said, hey, just, I used to tell my wife, hey, let, why, just let him chill a little yeah, bit more. Just, like, yeah, just chill. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. really... he get out the house, they call him. What you doing? Everything okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I get it as a parent, like you concerned, but hey, if he with his brother and sister, let him chill. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I love that. Yeah. Now, just growing up, like, uh, how was you at school? Were like, you into sports? Like. Um, I tried to get into sports, but mm. I learned I'm just not like sports savvy. Like I tried <laughs> volleyball, I tried basketball a little bit. Not I didn't try out for a basketball team, mm-hmm. but I just tried, tried it. To play, yeah. Yeah. I can tell where you did that. You yeah, like- I'm like I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, I, <yeah>. right? <laughs> I thought just because I could make it into a hoop that I could you know Man, do my like- thing, but that just wasn't a thing. I tried out for volleyball, that didn't work out. If I failed miserably, <laughs> um, so yeah, I've really just been always a music kid, which is funny because I never did music in school. Like mm-hmm. people are always like join the choir but i just have never really been into choir yeah. i just i feel like the, the choir songs they be like oh and it's yeah. like <laughs> yeah, for sure. i wanted to sing my like songs so mm-hmm. um but yeah it was cool i um i went to pontiac schools up until i was like four or five mm-hmm. and then um we moved um to lake orion when mm-hmm. i was i think six mm-hmm. i think it was like first grade second grade moved to oxford um yeah yeah now so talk about like, those two lake orion and oxford like mm-hmm. I, i'm thinking about just mostly white Yes. Yeah, like, yes, uh, how, how was that adjusting, like, coming from Pontiac to Pontiac, like, Detroit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. going, and go, going out there, like, how was it adjusting to that? It was definitely, um, 
but it, and that's kind of how I guess my song came about too. I don't fit in. I stand out. Obviously, mm-hmm. there's something clearly telling you that <laughs> sure. you're, you're different. Yeah. You're, you're different from everybody else around you. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, a lot of them were um, very receptive to me. Like I had so many friends and great friends. And it's crazy though because at the same time, I still didn't feel like I fit in with them though. Mm-hmm. They just were living completely different lives. I mean, they were all rich. They had yeah. like these huge mansion houses mm-hmm. and the the highest clothes, Lululemon. Yeah. And I'm coming <laughs> in with my Simply Tens for sure. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which was cool because they they were, they used to be like, "Where'd you get your clothes from?" Yeah. I'm like, "Simply Ten under ten dollars." Exactly. Um, and they went and go to spend a hundred dollars on a pair of jeans. I'm mm-hmm. like, I would never. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was definitely different because it became a a battle they like wanted to hang out a lot and mm-hmm. when they want to hang out they want to spend money that yeah, i didn't have like, hey, cause, like, yeah, yeah, yeah and it's like they used to like a, mo- a lot of their moms were cool with like paying for me but that mm-hmm. can also make you feel like a burden yeah, like, or, yeah, like no for sure people will try to use it against you like mm-hmm. well i got this for you so you have to do what i say like it became like kind of like that thing mm-hmm. and so yeah i spent my 11th grade year kind of lonely because i didn't want to deal with that mm-hmm. anymore mm-hmm. now was college ever in the picture like no yeah. it, um when i was younger because people kind of feed that to you like mm-hmm. you need to go to college yeah. i was like i'm going to michigan state yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. i'm gonna be a lawyer yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but it wasn't until my mom was like you do know like that doesn't have to be what you do mm-hmm. like she's the i like the person who kind of like opened me to like i can pursue my creative arts exactly. even though it's not the traditional route mm-hmm. it can still get you far not for sure take longer yeah, yeah yeah as long as you're doing something right and that's yeah. what she said as long as you're doing <laughs> yeah, something you know? and you're working toward it that's all i care about but yeah. it doesn't have to be this if that's not what you're passionate mm-hmm. about so now let me ask you this as a as i i know you're a singer but as a rapper like like especially being from Michigan, yeah. if you're not from like the city, like Detroit yes. or Flint, like, they don't take you serious as yes. an artist. Do you feel the same way being an RB at like that? You're not, you know, you're not from Detroit, like and they mm-hmm. look at you like, or you look at yourself like you ain't equal to other artists that's out here. Um, it definitely, I'll say, it was hard before the. I want to say before 2021, it, it did feel like nobody saw me. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said too, because if you're not like heavy in that scene, people mm-hmm. were kind of like laughing at you or looking at you like you're yeah, stupid. Yeah, like, who is this? Like, like yeah. girl, it's one percent chance you're gonna make half <laughs> yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, but my own, my one prayer was that the city of Pontiac knew mm-hmm. who I was. For sure. And like, I gained so much local notoriety um, in 2022, mm-hmm. and like, I was constantly booked everywhere. So um, Pontiac, kind of knowing who I am, kind of have helped extend me to like the Detroit area but yeah. that's something I want to conquer this year mm-hmm. like going into the Detroit area but yeah. it will make you no, feel for like sure. For sure. Like, why, I had some dope this? people from Pontiac. Uh, shout out to Rose Spit. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's a legend. That's my dog. I love him, man. Was... I had a, um, we actually had a song together, but the guy um, whose song it was, something happened with the beat and we mm-hmm. couldn't do it. But yeah. we had a song and I was like, I wish Dang. it came out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Larry Bell, like, I love Pontiac. Larry it's just, it's one person who like me, but it's all good. <laughs> 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 well, Pontiac, yeah, I mess with y'all, man. Yes, Yaktown is what's up. I love my Yaktown. Yeah, that's n- family. I, I did see, even though we right next to each other, it is a little different between mm-hmm. Pontiac and Detroit. It is. Like, 100% like, is. Yeah, like, dang, we right next door, but it's, it's a difference. It's two different, like, vibes, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure, like, yeah. Y'all, y'all from Michigan? Like, right? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. First time. <laughs> oh, uh, 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 so you said you wanted to get, in, you got to music at age 13. Mm-hmm. And what, what was the first time you being in the studio? And, like, and talk about that. Like, because a lot of times you sing and you do what you do in the room, but you get those headphones on, it's like a different mm-hmm. thing. Oh, yeah. Talk um, about that first time in the studio. So my first time in the studio, um, I was actually posting videos on Instagram, and this mm. guy from Chicago like started commenting on everything, mm. and he scheduled a call with us. Um, and we just started getting to know him for a period of time. And he was like, I have like people I know in Chicago. I'd love for you guys to come down here and I can introduce you to some people. Mm-hmm. So we ended up meeting him and, um, he introduced me to this guy named very special Ed mm-hmm. and him, it was him and Landon and they mm-hmm. introduced me to my first like session. And I was so nervous. I, bet. I was so unconfident in my voice yeah. at the time. Um, and just unconfident in general and who I was. Uh, but they made me feel so comfortable. They introduced me to like writing, mm-hmm. like I was writing before them, but they introduced me to the formula of writing mm-hmm. and it was really cool yeah. um and we ended up going to chicago for six months straight every weekend oh, while i was it. in school just yeah. to get a studio session because we didn't know of any resources every, around us so your first studio session was like a real, real legit studio yeah uh, it was like the <laughs> attic or the basement like yeah, I mean. yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was dope yeah because our first my first studio experience was in my uh my homeboy uh bedroom in the really? closet and then everybody got, hey, be quiet and i remember one particular <laughs> song everybody be quiet you heard a whole conversation in the back of my song like <laughs> Shout out to him, man. Shout out yes, to him, man. It'd be like that. Yeah. Those mics pick up everything. Yeah. Have you ever had a, a, a like a hood uh, studio experience yet? No. Oh, we got to get I you one. Just one time. This one. <laughs> you bring mom. She bring that thing with her. Like, right. You come with me. <laughs> like, because I know it just it's something about the, the real studio legit. 
Shout out to my boy Buns, man. Rest in peace. He put me in my first yeah. real studio. But oh, dope, dope, dope. it's like that, that, that. I don't know. You walk in the house and like, like. Oh, you know what? Actually, I have then. Ron Jackson. Duh. I forgot okay. about it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, it was actually in the house. Now that you yeah. say that, that was the second time I went to the studio though, yeah. and it was like in the neck of the yeah. neck of the woods. Did you walk in like, what is this? Yes, I was like, <laughs> there's a studio in there. Yeah, Are yeah. you sure? It because the house had it almost looked like abandoned. Oh my god. So <laughs> right, this is about you, but real. Backstory, I remember I um, went to the studio and I realized it was a trap house and I was with my son. Oh, God. So they were selling drugs. Oh, they were selling God. fake checks. They had pit bulls. And it was oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Then my son right there like. We got to get out of here. Well, no, I finished the session, but. <laughs> <laughs> I still did the session. Yeah. Then I left. <laughs> and I'll be lying if I say I ain't go back. But <laughs> he had some cheap prices. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you can't three, be like that. Sometimes three, you just got to do what well, you got to $30 for four songs. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I'm like, quick little, quick, quick songs real quick. Yeah, 34 yeah. Doc. I mean, can't yeah. beat that. But this was like back in like, what, like, you know, 2010, so. I'm hollering. He's like, man, just give me $34. You pretty nice. I'm like, all right, bet. <laughs> okay, bet. I can hear they missed it with the pit bulls and stuff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was right across the street from my house, too. Oh, my God. So, man. no distance, $34. Yep. Put my son all in danger. Yeah, it made, Good you, father. made you forget about the <laughs> trap house. Let me get this work done. Exactly. I'm like, because this going to be my story. Right. I'm going to be on Breakfast Club like because I remember back in the day. Yup. Yeah. I was in a trap house. Yeah. They had the pit bulls around. Because <laughs> I'm like you. Every Everything I put out, every song I put out, I'm like, all right, I'm about to blow. Yeah. Yes. Man. Yes. Yeah. It'd be like that. Like but you you're going you gonna to blow you gonna blow for sure. Thank you. And we're going to go back and I'm going to bring you back around. Yep. Like, so how's the success now? For the sure. success now? For sure. For sure. Mom's still going to be there. Yep. You know? Right on the side. Looking like Cookie from uh, okay. what's that? Okay. <laughs> Come on, Cookie Lion. <laughs> Cookie. That's funny. <laughs> At what point did you feel comfortable enough to let others hear your music? Ooh. Or are you um, still fighting with that? Like? So, what age was I? Was that 16? I wrote my song Cope. Um, I ended up going to Star Factory in Oak Park. Oh, okay, um, yeah, everybody. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, been, yeah, yeah. I trained. That's where I trained for the most part, like for mm. three years straight. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, it, Cope, the, my song Cope was actually a joke. He just said, like, go write something that you like, you know. I don't know, just go have fun. Go write yeah. something. And I wrote I Cope in like I love 30 that song. minutes. That song nice. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. That was like one of the fastest songs I ever wrote. It was 30 minutes. Yeah. And um, I ended up like changing some, like the verses and stuff though, but the hook was always like that. Mm. Um, yeah, I want to say when I was 16, I like got confident in it. And I was like, okay, I think this could actually like help people. Yeah. Like yeah. if it's healing me, I know it could heal somebody else. So, mm -hmm. no, yeah. for sure. Shout out, shout out. out. Now let's talk about the real stuff. <laughs> Let's do it. So, no, so December thirty first, you released uh, your latest project uh, on twenty twenty two, Daddy Issues. Mm -hmm. uh, this is your second project after uh, seventeen. Mm -hmm. Talk about <clears throat> that, and talk about the album cover because to me, I see, mm -hmm. um, I see you now, mm -hmm. kind of like holding your younger self, like hands, like, hey, you gonna, everything it. gonna be okay, everything gonna be all right. Yeah. I got you. Like if nobody got you, I got you. Yeah. So just talk about that. First of all, I love that you got the concept of that because I was really hoping that it would convey mm -hmm. <laughs> when people seen it. For sure. Um, but yeah, it was really important for me to like signify like that we all just talked about this this morning. We all carry the little people in us with us, mm -hmm. even like though we grow up like you are 37 but there's still a part of you that could be 12 mm -hmm. that like your 12 year old self could be triggered by something that happens sure. to you it hurt when you said i was 37 it hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like ah you <laughs> shot me like you 37 <laughs> so, <laughs> no, go ahead, I'm talking. no you're good <laughs> Um, and so with me, I'm 21, but there's mm -hmm. still like a seven year old girl in me mm -hmm. that is very sensitive and very triggered, um, by some of the tiniest things, but can be huge to mm -hmm. the little girl in me. For sure. Um, so it was kind of like me showing the differentiation of like, even though I'm grown up, I still have so much healing to do because I'm trying to heal the little girl that's traumatized by all those words that mm -hmm. I put on them. Sorry. By all the words I put on the cover. Um, and I put the little like screaming man to kind of signify like my dad was very like emotionally and verbally abusive. Mm. Um, and I feel like he did what he could with what he knew. And that's what I've learned to do as well. Like give grace to the trauma he has. Mm. Um, but also at the same time, not use it as an excuse to give him an, a, a pass. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was just me trying to like paint the full picture yeah, like yeah. of the shadow that I've been fighting, which is him mm. and myself and mm. trying to heal little me. Yeah, I, And I, like I said, I, I love the project. Uh, I forgot how did you get on my radar? <laughs> it was maybe somebody posted something, but okay. I'm like, 
I just girl can sing. Like your, oh. I like your voice. You got like a, a you know, saying a, a, a deep voice. Oh yeah. But it, it sounds good. Like at the same Thank time, you. like it, like I, yeah, I like it. Like Thank I don't you. just invite anybody on the show. You know, what I'm I try not to. Wow, <laughs> I appreciate it so but much. Was it? What did you want to prove from this second uh, project? Like that you know that you grew as an artist. Like what were some some of the things that you wanted to prove to yourself and to the fans listening? Um, it was kind of like almost me facing one of my biggest fears. Mm -hmm. Um. And because, like, my daddy issues has been something I've been very, like, ashamed of. Like, mm -hmm. this the relationship I've had with him because it, it has stemmed and created so many things within me. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like if I put it out, it would be true. Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I don't want to believe what the reality is. I want to believe the fantasy of, like, being daddy's princess and, mm -hmm. like, having a close relationship with him. Um, so, yeah, it was, like, really me just proving to myself that, like, you're not perfect. You have human being, like, mm -hmm. like experiences. And, um just letting people like in into the like the deep vulnerabilities that have yeah. shaped me into who I am. What what made you comfortable enough to talk about like something that's so personal? Um so it actually him cutting me off triggered it, of mm -hmm. course, cuz it's like you've always you've already traumatized the mess out of me growing up. Mm -hmm. And then you want to traumatize me even more <laughs> by just cold turkey like really? cutting me off mm -hmm. um and it's funny because um the whole thing even started because of my song cope mm -hmm. cope i actually originally wrote about him mm -hmm. and that's what i was coping with mm -hmm. um and he didn't even know that at the time he was like i want to say the last six months of our relationship was the best time we've we've had mm -hmm. um and i had previously like just been trying to tell him how i feel about things mm -hmm. and so i would tell him how i feel and he would like try to fix it for the time being and then he'd revert back to yeah, his old ways yeah, yeah, yeah. so um what i did learn is that he was only being there for me because he wanted a shout out mm. at the end of oh my god at the end of cope <laughs> so when he didn't get a shout out yeah. he called me i want to say maybe four to five times after my video shoot and i just i wasn't on i wasn't talking to anybody after my video shoot because mm. it was a two-day shoot i was tired i was exhausted and i just wasn't talking to anybody mm -hmm. so he was calling my mom and she was like she'll call you back she'll call you back so i finally called him back he didn't answer i didn't ever hear from him mm. so i ended up um going live i saw that yeah. yeah i ended up going live because i was just so over like I, at that point i knew what it was mm -hmm. i'm like okay this is we're going we're doing this again because mm -hmm. this isn't the first time he's like we haven't spoken like mm -hmm. this has been a thing before um so yeah i was just like you know what? i'm not gonna live a lie anymore mm. i'm gonna tell my story and i'd be a hypocrite to continue preaching tell your story yeah. and, like, be vocal. <laughs> For sure. and i'm not being authentic to my story because mm. i'm trying to protect somebody yeah. and i always said i'm not trying to bash anybody it's just i can't be freely an artist if i'm not telling my story authentically mm. so that started it and um yeah it was yeah. i was really proud because it was scary for sure. for sure and from that from that live post that's the whole i'm the bad guy song coming in <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know your stuff, man. Then your, your auntie, he knows his stuff. Your auntie talking junk like I don't know. Period. Like you know what I'm saying? Like so. This <laughs> she ate me up. I'm not gonna okay. yeah, yeah, She yeah. tried to eat me up. Yeah, she was going crazy a little bit, but she yeah. cussed me out. Yeah, yeah. So like, would you like you putting it out there? Did you, then did you feel bad? Like damn, like they tripping or whatever. Like, but I just wanted to let y'all know what was really going on. I ain't talked to this guy and mm -hmm. I'm trying to build his relationship. Like, do you feel bad after putting it out and getting that backlash, like from family? Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, they made me feel bad just from mm -hmm. the reactions, but I didn't feel bad for doing it. I actually, I felt free mm -hmm. and I felt, um, healing from mm -hmm. it because it was something that I, it's like, you can't change anything first of all that you don't acknowledge. Mm -hmm. So that was like me taking the step to acknowledge what I was going through, mm -hmm. which set me free from something i was like lying to myself about yeah, all my yeah. life um but yeah them victim shaming me definitely made me feel bad yeah, I sure. had, that's what kept me in a deep hole i was getting harassed and attacked by mm -hmm. his family members they yeah. called me they said i had trash ass music yeah. um i'm a flea mm -hmm. i'm a hoe i'm never gonna make it to the radio yeah. like they said so many like just terrible things to me and i'm 17 yeah like that's you terrible. guys are grown women yeah, grown yeah, for men. Sure. yeah you tripping yeah uh, y'all tripping out there i heard he even said um to my brother actually my that's the thing my brother he he's like you said he's funk they can be functional mm. he repeats everything he hears um my dad i heard he heard my 17 project and he said that's why my dumb a got played yeah so it's just like hurtful yeah. things to yeah. a little girl you're sure. yeah. to my father and my family and you're cussing me out about my experience that mm -hmm. you were not in the household yeah your scene. real life experience at that like yeah. hey, hey, they're something. just judging it based off of who he can like mm -hmm. people put on faces he was really good at putting on masks mm -hmm. and like being it's easy f to fake in front of somebody yeah, for so like 10 yeah. but it's about who you are at home the rest the of your life yeah. mm -hmm. and they just didn't see it so mm. how, how long was your mom and, and pops together um 17 years 
Oh, so he was there. He was at the crib. Yeah, we okay. like I lived together. I uh, lived together with him until I was like thirteen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then they got divorced, and then he was in my life until I was seventeen. Mm -hmm. Four years now that we have not spoken. That's wild. Like, I and know. Then, you know, because you always see that when kids grow up, like. Like, cause my mom was a part of that. Her dad left when he was like eight years old, whatever. Mm. And she was the one fighting to try to keep that relationship. But then the boys be mm -hmm. like, "I'm good, bro. Like, mm. I'm over it." Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then shout out to my cousin, even though she passed away, mm. she was the same way. We the same age, and she was trying to build this relationship with my uncle, which is her father. Mm. And her brother was like, hey, "I'm good, bro." I'm like, good, yeah. So like, talk about just trying to, trying to still, even though you see that. He might not be the best person, but you still trying to get that relationship right. Still trying to, you know what I'm saying, yeah, continue yeah. on being a father and daughter and stuff like that. It's, that was definitely hard. And shout out to my mom because she honestly, like we probably would have, this would have probably been happened mm -hmm. if it wasn't for her. I mm -hmm. think the only reason it, it took till I was 17 for us to just not be speaking all together mm -hmm. is because she always convinced me like, I know he does this, but he's still your dad. Like he does mm -hmm. love you. Just he did, he can't love you in the way you want to be loved. Mm -hmm. um, so she always was kind of the mediator. Like when he was treating me a certain way, she would try to be like, this is how she feels. Mm -hmm. Like, can you respond to that? And he'd be like, sorry, you feel that way. Like I didn't do that. Yeah, 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 so it was sure. just, it was and it became heavy for her and she finally got to the point like you know what neither of us should have to fight to keep somebody exactly in your yeah, life. especially like, your pops yeah right it's like you are help me help get me to this earth so i was at the point i was tired of fighting for somebody who doesn't fight for me mm -hmm. and it's like i'm a kid i shouldn't have to do that so do you look at that song cope as like a love hate song because that's the song that kind of ended the way it did end mm -hmm. our relationship and stuff but it's also a song that's been getting you know saying some circulation um, actually no I, I i generally just love just love it mm -hmm. because um in in the ending of our relationship i used to look at it and he did it because he thought it'd be a punishment mm -hmm. um it actually i've been better without him yeah. which is like really sad because like me even being of hurt that he cut me off is more me mourning the idea of what i want him yeah. to be mm -hmm. but when he was present in my life he wasn't good to me yeah then not like, also i could see like when he was around <clears throat> you was trying to fight so much for him right right and and I was like, like that's not healthy yeah. Yeah. It's, it, that, and it used to make me go through so many things. Like I would not be here right now if mm. I would have. We were still connected mm. musically, emotionally, exactly. internally, spiritually. So yeah. I feel like it was just God kind of protecting me. And like, unfortunately, just because someone's your parent doesn't mean mm. that they they should stay in your life. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. That's messed up. I hate that. I know. I know. It's really no. sad. So, and that, <laughs> it's like, oh. And, and that's probably why the whole granddad thing hit a little hard because that was like that one positive yes. male figure that was, you know, saying your life. He spoke like, so much life into me. You were yeah. so right. That's how I, like, he gave me that. And when mm -hmm. he died, I was like, dang, I'm stuck with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't going to do none of that. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. You need a big brother, man. I'm right here, man. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> now, um, talk top five songs on the project. For you, for me, it's uh, Sorry, mm. uh, Falling, mm. Scream, mm. Cope. Mm. And I like the, my, uh, Lost Girls. I feel like this should be on that really? single. Yeah, Lost Girls. Those hard. actually are my top five. Yeah, That's yeah. funny that you said that. Yeah. I love me some Sorry. I love me some Falling. Lost Girl, I feel like I kind of slept on, but mm -hmm. I do really love the song. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I those are all of them. For sure. I love so much. And yeah. Almost Lost You. Almost Lost You is dedicated to my mom mm -hmm. um, about her brain surgeries and me fearing that I'm going to lose my best friend. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like my um, mm -hmm. just dedicated yeah. song to her. Now, <clears throat> I got this thing called Talk About the Bars. I'll take a piece of a song <clears throat> and we talk about it. So on the uh, Older Without You, are you worried mm -hmm. that life will move on without y'all ever making it right? Um, that used to be a worry of mine. Um, and that's what I feel like I battled so hard with. Like... Dang, like what if we'd never speak again mm -hmm. um but it like what's helped me cope is thinking about again when he was here what did he do mm -hmm. did he add value did he speak life into you was he a positive impact on your mm -hmm. life so i've really just become so um like accepting of the fact that we probably will never speak again and yeah. i've become okay with it yeah yeah, yeah. because i'm i mean i'm healthy i'm i'm mm -hmm. better i have a a guy in my life my mom's um significant other who mm -hmm. has been everything to me that i've ever needed um as a father in two years than mm -hmm. my dad ever was in 17. <laughs> yeah that's so. it <laughs> shout out to him <laughs> yeah he's, he's like told like he's instilled so many things into me that i just needed and mm -hmm. my mom of course is like she had to be the mom and the dad mm -hmm. Um, but some things you just need from a man. For sure, no, for sure, so. for sure, for sure. And you looking like, wow, this how this how it should really be. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. It feels good to see, even like watching her be treated right. Like I mm. watched my mom be treated terribly for most of my life. So mm. she's finally in a healthy, 
you know, dynamic. And it's like when you don't have an, a representation of how that's supposed to look, that's who you're going to run to. People mm-hmm. like your father. No, for people sure. People treated you better. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And shout out to your mom for, you know, find somebody that, you know, make her happy yeah. as well. She so. had to do a lot of work to get yeah. there. No, that's what's up. That's, that's what's up. It's hard. She did it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like or so you, you totally fine. Like, if I never, ever, like, speaking in, like, you, I really you, am. You, because I'm, you tried. I try, and that's the thing. That's what the Daddy Issues um, album was about as well. Like, if all else fails, you heard what I had exactly, to say. Exactly. I got my closure and my peace, even if you didn't give mm-hmm, it to me. I'm giving sure. myself closure. Yep. And, and, and I'm forgiving you for myself. And when she blew up. <laughs> well, remember, we, you, you said that, that trash music. You said you that said shit. You said I heard trash ain't music, and <laughs> yeah. I ain't know nothing make. Yeah, so don't be mad. Like, don't be telling people, that's my, that's my baby right there. <laughs> I ain't your baby. Okay? <laughs> I tried to be a princess, and you didn't want me to. What if, it, what if that, once you, blew, once you blew up, what if he do try to come back around? Would you? <sighs> it probably bah! Because I feel like I'd be going backwards. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've gotten so far without you. What do I need you for now? Mm-hmm. And it's like you've... Some things I just like, I don't know how you come back from. Like the things yeah. he said, the things he's done, the things my family has done. It's just, it's it's forgivable, but it's mm-hmm. like I got to keep you here for my own peace and mm-hmm. my own sanity. And it's like, I don't want you here for the accolades of all the pain and hurt that got me here because of you. Yep. Thanks for... You want credit. Thanks for giving me the pain to write the song. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah. But it's like, I don't need anybody who makes me feel like that. I'm around me at all yeah once you get that BT award and be out there like hey shout out to my auntie <laughs> <laughs> period <laughs> shout out to your voicemail yeah, you yeah. got me a Grammy <laughs> now are you uh, close to anybody else on that side besides your brother um no I used to be close to my cousin mm-hmm. um but they're yeah. in her head yeah, yeah so, so. Yeah, they feel like they gotta pick a side and they yeah, gotta pick their, yeah. yeah. she had actually That's... came back around and was like my mama said she don't got nothing to do with nothing my auntie <laughs> she don't got nothing to do with nothing <laughs> and you know we, we, we cool we cool and then she ghosted me again I'm like girl okay you're officially yeah I'm out, out. I don't yeah, need yeah. the inconsistency yeah yeah now on the, song, struggle. on the song Cope you said maybe I should open up but I can't let it go Were mm. you talking about that whole little hurt from yeah, honestly, that that um that quote is for everything I experienced in my life. Kind of how I talked about even too like it's mm. a toxic thing for me to like I hold on to things so deeply, mm. and that is from like suppressing my emotions to my career of wanting it to work out so bad of things mm. I want to work out. Mm. So it's like yeah, I should open up, but I'm too scared. I can't let go of what that what the unknown looks like of mm. me doing that for sure. So I just keep it in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do it anymore, but yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. I was when I wrote it. On falling, you said you got me trapped in my mind, lost girl with no trace of time. Mm. Talk about that. Um, the internal battles I feel it's like the things he put me through puts you in this like almost like imprisonment in your head and like an, an isolation state mm-hmm. that you feel like you can't break out of to the point where like I, I said it's like it makes you not function you lose track of time and like you you're so engulfed into it that by the time you snap out of it it's like the day is done mm-hmm. so yeah. No. yeah it's like falling into a toxic cycle for sure on the bad guy you say uh, don't know my friends from foe do you deal with like 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 with the friendships with you know saying like or with people in your family like you don't know who really real for you yeah that's how it was and and i think the voicemail of my family treating me like that kind of woke me up to that because it's mm. like you're supposed to be my blood mm-hmm. so it's like if my own blood does this who's my friend who's yeah. my you know what i mean yeah. like who can i trust mm-hmm. it was yeah will you ever let that guard down from like really like accepting people into your life or, or yeah. think they come in just with an agenda or whatever yeah 100 percent. I, I mean i have let it down um that that first like 2020 to 2022 i was like mm. everybody stay away from me mm-hmm. um but slowly but surely like 2023 i i, I did let it down more and it actually kind of put me in some bad situations <laughs> <laughs> um, which is kind of sad but i i learned that you can't let the things that happen to you control you like mm-hmm. you have to live you have to be free i obviously have boundaries and let make people earn mm-hmm. that from you but you can't just be guarded or you're not gonna experience life now on the song uh, sorry you say why you never say you sorry if he were to come and say you know what i'm i'm i effed up i'm sorry like mm-hmm. would you uh, would you accept it or you'd be like uh i don't know if i could trust um, this um i think i would be like leery of it but i probably would accept it because mm-hmm. it's something that like for me knowing him he has he's a very prideful man mm-hmm. and i know for him to say sorry it would be very like like the the jesus himself is going to have to come down him mm-hmm. like and walk <laughs> on this table before he does that so i know if he says sorry he he would mean it because it, he he looks at himself as a perfect person mm-hmm. and he does no wrong so if he does that it's like okay that's the first step to yeah. some type of accountability yeah yeah, that's it, yeah, that's crazy. Cause I remember I had another artist who worked at the Star Factory, and it was Kins. Really? You know Kins? Y- Kinsey? Yeah. Kins, yep, yep, yep. I remember she was on here going hard on her dad. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Screw him, forget him. <laughs> Next thing you know, 
I'm on. I'm not knowing, but I'm on the. Uh, this, you know what the pell bar is? Yeah, yeah. With her dad. <laughs> her, Stop. my wife, uh, best friend. That's her uncle. So I'm like, I'm looking like, and he, I'm like, what the heck? No. <laughs> but he don't know I was talking junk because he didn't see the interview. But I'm like, yeah, screw, screw him. Wow. That nigga ain't shit. <laughs> crazy we just want to share we share drinks not like oh my god <laughs> and yeah. that's how it be that's how it be man <laughs> no. that is how it be oh, hopefully i don't know your dad I'm like, hey, right man, that ain't no good <laughs> <laughs> that's some bull crap right there bro unless you know we playing man. basketball together like right like oh i was just with your daughter <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah man you ain't hey man i don't even want to play no more okay. <laughs> right <laughs> Now on um, this on the uh, Lost Girl, like I said, that's one of my favorite songs. You mentioned your mom and her being the only person that really understand. Even when she yeah. go through her, her, she helping. Yes, yes. It's just it's all about that because I'm quite sure like y'all both hurt by the same person at the time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's kind of what kept us like getting through the abuse that we were experiencing. Mm -hmm. As that he was very emotional, and verbally abusive, and he was very like I had it bad, but she had it like so much worse. Mm -hmm. And how he would speak to her and treat her was just like so despicable. Mm -hmm. It made me lose so much respect for him as a man because I just don't see how you could treat a woman like that. Mm -hmm. um, but because we were experiencing the same thing, it's like we are all we've had. Like mm -hmm. she's been my only family, really. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's like. We just, we just connected there and we were just always there for each other for and sure. that's just how it's remained now once you do decide to get into a relationship do you feel like you're going to put like too much expectations on the guy because of what your your, your father did um relationships for me are so scary because of him yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I feel like I, I definitely still have a lot of work within myself to do before I get in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the part I'm trying to figure out. Like, I'm trying to navigate that because there's still parts of me that I, I don't want to use a guy to fill a void. And mm -hmm. I want to be whole within myself. Exactly. Um, and not that you're just going to be completely whole all the time. But just heal those parts to where I know I'm ready to go into a relationship and mm -hmm. not project my wounds onto him. Mm -hmm. um, and not be so triggered by like yeah. the many many things for sure um, so yeah, yeah for it's sure. hard i'm definitely scared of it though yeah, yeah no, i bet i bet yeah it's scary <laughs> hey wait come to come to my girl correct y'all <laughs> <laughs> no for real like i don't want to be it's it and then the effect that it has on your mental like going through the relationships and it ends so badly mm -hmm. um me and the guy i wrote the 17 project about i actually ended up getting back together with because he came back and around and said sorry mm -hmm. and that he you know didn't mean it and we for were together sure. for a period of time and he ended up being crazy yeah so so it's like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I just don't have time for so it. Is that what you want to continue on with that theme, like writing projects that, that is dedicated to something in your life? Like you said, 17 is about this this dual yeah. relationship. Uh, this album is about, you know what I'm saying, your pops and stuff like that. Like, do you want to continue on with that theme or you want to change it up for the next time? Um, That's a great question. I never thought about that. I mm. feel like I'm I'm such a storyteller that mm. themes are like what fulfill me. So I probably will I probably will be a theme person. Mm. Um unless I just I just hit a point in my career and I'm just like, I'm gonna do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um but I do feel like I'm my best artist and my best self when I pull mm. from those authentic experiences mm. and kind of base the projects around that. It helps me pull deep mm. deeper than I usually would. Mm. So yeah, probably be themed for a while. So is the net project gonna be twenty one? <laughs> going to your, going to your, your adult life, like. <laughs> hey, I actually have a um project called Twenty. Okay. Because I was I was twenty in twenty twenty three. Yeah. Um, I didn't finish writing. I wrote a couple songs. But twenty one yeah. is only right. That's a twenty one is a big only year. right. Yeah, it's only yes, right. It's, yeah. it's, it's it, and that you're right. It's such a um, it's a new level of life and mm -hmm. like of womanhood that you're walking into. Mm -hmm. And I'm we were just talking about this morning. I'm walking to experiences I've never experienced before, and yeah. I was trying to like deal with it in yep. myself and I don't even know what's happening that's gonna be a new project 21 21 executive produced by Shell. <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> yes. that's, that's dope <laughs> did you feel like this project got the love it deserved or it's still building um, I think it's still building for mm -hmm. sure um, I think be, uh, one thing I'm noticing people don't like talking about mental health mm -hmm. like as much as we push it now um, people would rather like feel good which mm -hmm. I understand because people don't want to deal with what they're feeling but that is definitely what I'm going to do my best at like pushing is that instead of always running to just feel good that we deal with our emotions so that we're not temporary feeling good mm -hmm. but like more permanently it's never permanent but more mm -hmm. managing it yeah. versus acting like it's not there because we're twerking and we're getting like, <laughs> like that's cool yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool but i don't want that to be it yeah, 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 yeah. I, I feel like we would be better as a society if we dealt with what we were, mm. were going through i mean i feel like coming to america this girl good now um like i told 
everybody I told you, I like to ask people prior to if they want to rap or they want to sing, yes. this, that, and the third. So I didn't want to just be like, hey, sing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Presenting. Like, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> she said she'd give us a couple bars, let y'all know how that voice is or whatever. So, yeah. You know so, what I'm saying? You like to hear it, here it goes. Like, <laughs> right. Like, you want sing a little bit of the song I'm dropping in February. Mm -hmm. I don't fit in, I stand out. I kind of been posting many clips of it. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't fit in, I stand out. Let me tell you something so crushing. Make sure you listen, no judgment. I am not the villain, I'm just a loner. Get no loving. Hoping I don't fall deeper. Closer to the edge, get steeper. Cause to set the trend hard to fit in when you're a leader. Whoa. Yo, that scream that made a fool of. Laughed that dragged, wasn't cool enough. Oh, so sad. Da da da, da da da, dun, da da da. Wake up mad, wake up moody. I'm so glad I'm not a groupie. You would like me if you knew me. I don't fit in, I stand out. In my own lane, my own road. Don't care about opinions of the crowd. No matter how loud, silence the sound. Don't really care about being cool. Sit back, I'm in my own rules. Get people to switch up the views. Oh, breaking news i'm the amused da, 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 da. yeah <laughs> told you she can sing y'all <laughs> hey i don't know what you was talking about cuz <laughs> auntie pops auntie pops y'all fooling man man that's what's up i am glad that you you know what i'm saying give us some bars people be like yeah bars, bars. I'm, I'm a singer but i ain't about to sing right, like, right. i'm a rapper but i ain't gonna rap like, right right no, i always thought it was it. weird because it mean even though it's, it could be nervous <laughs> You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Doing it like that. That's why I like to be, make people feel comfortable. Yeah, for sure. And ask them prior to. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want to, um, I know you, I don't know if you know about making a band. Oh, I yeah, know, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you can really talk about Pete Diddy right now, but. <laughs> I actually, I got an offer back in 2020. They were going to restart it, mm -hmm. and they offered to have me on the show. Oh. Uh, yeah, they had scouted me out, but COVID happened, so yeah. it didn't happen. But I was offered to get yeah, out there. Yeah, the yeah. remake. Glad you and me did. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, no, I'm sorry. Shout out to D. I hope, I hope everything okay. Right. Cause. Still but, a legend in the music. No, for industry. sure. For sure. For sure. I hope that stuff ain't true. I hope they just trying I know. I really that. hope not. Yeah, man. R, we, yeah, they took R. Kelly. Come on. Don't take don't take right. Diddy. Like, all the all the greats. Yeah, I still, I still listen to R. Kelly. I'm sorry, though. <laughs> Most people do. Yeah, he got good music. Yeah. But if you had to make your band, your album, mm. with you and four other people, mm. it could be singers, it could be rappers, mm. producers. It's your, just you. Who would it be? You and four other people. Oh, God. Wow. I wow. Me, Drake. Okay. I love me some Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you know who Billie Eilish is? Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Oh, I love R and B music more than rap. Man. <laughs> Man. I love me some Billie yeah. Eilish. Um so Drake, Billie Eilish. It's gonna be kinda weird combo. Nicki Minaj <laughs> and Beyonce. Okay. It would be a very interesting I like band. It. I like it. Those I are like just it. some inspirations of mine that I think would be cool. Now who do, who do you want to work with that's locally? <sighs> if you Ooh. if you could put something together. Oh man, dude. <sighs> I guess Cash Doll isn't local. Is she lo does she consider I mean, local because she's from Detroit? I mean, you can kind of do it. It's a little bit both. A little bit of both. Yeah, we, okay. We, we, we I really want to work with Cash Doll so bad. All right. You Cash Doll. Um, I really want her podcast so bad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Been trying. Yes. Oh Been tagging her. You saw my tag, too. <laughs> right. Yes. I'm going to tag, spam her For tagging sure. your comments. For sure. Um, who else? Big Sean is not local any really either. Yeah. But Big Sean. I'm okay. just gonna give you people just, I wanna work yeah, with. Yeah. <laughs> Cash out Big Sean. Um I definitely wanna work with Drake really bad. Mm. Um who else can I think of locally? I used to say my dream collab used to be Zaire Dene. She's one of my like oh, really yeah, she was on close friends. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have a collab now though. Me and mm. her have just become really close all together. Mm -hmm. Um so I found that funny though because we we became close because of just meeting each other in the collab. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, that was that was cool. Um, the last yeah. one you, you gotta say what's the name for the last one just because the song didn't come out. Roast spit. Oh, roast spit. <laughs> yes. The song didn't come out, so yes. yeah, you can do that. Like You're right. Yeah. I want that song to come out so bad. It now, was a really good song too. Now I got something. <clears throat> You still young, so it's kind of crazy. I, mm -hmm. I got some uh, a thing called young nigga shit versus some shit I've been through. <laughs> <laughs> I like so that. that's saying like, what's something that you believed in? I'm gonna say for you mm -hmm. at 13 <laughs> yeah. oh <my laughs> that God. you don't believe in now. Oh, <laughs> that you oh, wow. that you look at your younger self like what you was tripping. I say 16, 16 to now. What's something that you believed in as a young 16 year old that you look at like you was tripping? I don't know. What did I believe in? Well, you still got to live, so this question used to be for old heads. Yeah, this is really <laughs> hard. You have great questions, things I've never thought about. Mm -hmm. Things that I believed in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
maybe that everybody has your best interest at heart. Mm, that's good. One. For sure. I mm-hmm. feel like I I used to be so naive in thinking mm-hmm. that everybody was my bestie. Mm-hmm. And it's gotten me in really bad situations. For sure. Because people end up being envious or, mm-hmm. you know, just not being who they say they were. Mm-hmm. Now, before we get to the little funnies at the end, mm-hmm. what's your advice to someone going through some <clears throat> stuff and it's kind of like messing up like their passion for what they really love? Um. I'd say, like, get help. Like, don't Mm -hmm. be afraid to ask for help. Um, It's no point in, like, experiencing, like, a silent battle. Mm -hmm. Because silent battles and not saying something about it is only going to lead you down a path that you feel like Mm -hmm. you can't get out of. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to tell your story. Um, Don't be afraid to even use your pain as a testimony. Because most of the time, the things we go through aren't even about us. Mm -hmm. It's about who we're supposed to inspire and impact Mm -hmm. who who may feel alone in what you're going through as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, just don't be afraid. For sure, for sure. Now we got this thing Top three I ain't did top three In a long time mm. Give me your top three Childhood cr- celebrity crushes Ooh Who loves my crush <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was really heavy On um, like Disney channel people <laughs> Oh man Who was it And you know what's so funny I feel like I've always been like just re- weird from everybody else because mm-hmm. I didn't really even focus on crushes when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. But I'd say maybe like uh like the Jonas Brothers I used to be <laughs> really like into. Yeah. Um, High School Musical. What's his name? Corbin Blue. Oh okay, my yeah, God. I remember. Yeah, everybody. That yeah, was my blue. man <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, Did he do anything now? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm Disney kids. Yeah. Be, yeah. yeah, he. I think he's living his best life now. He still is like mm-hmm. more in. I feel he's like an influence mm-hmm. now, like yeah. very social media heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, so him. Oh, Trevor Jackson. Trevor Jackson <laughs> was my life. Yeah. Um, who else? What was that group? Mindless Behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, who was the other guy? There's another guy. Yeah. Oh, what's his name? He was on the show with Chloe Bailey and um. Y- Yashara y- Yashahidi or something don't I give can't me a remember line. his don't name give me a line. <laughs> he was associated with Mind's Behavior though he was okay. like a solo artist but okay. yeah oh I think I, th- they, you know I think I think yeah I think so I just don't know the man do you know the man name <laughs> she's like I don't know <laughs> but, but then you had what Jacob Lattimore yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah. Jacob Lattimore yeah. was another one Luke, it's not it's not no it's not, not Luke not, yeah, no, no no you know you could probably see him yeah, in your I, head. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we know what we were talking about <laughs> your top three movies Ooh, High School Musical, Cheetah Girls, <laughs> um, <laughs> and a movie called Divergent. Okay, okay. Yeah. Top three snacks. Ooh, Doritos, Nacho Cheese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? <laughs> um, Doritos, Nacho Cheese, um, popcorn, mm. and fruit roll-ups. Okay, okay, okay. Top three foods. Um, chicken Alfredo. Mm, let me um, some chicken Alfredo. Put some yes. shrimp in that boy. Ooh! Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Thai food, I love pad Thai with chicken, so good. No mm-hmm. crushed peanuts, no bean sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> she got it all together. <laughs> um, and pizza. Pizza, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's your, what what topics you got on your pizza? Um, definitely like pepperoni, green pepper, banana pepper, mushroom, mm-hmm. that kind of vibe. I'm usually yeah. just a pepperoni girl. Like I only yeah. get fancy if I'm feeling it. But yeah. really pepperoni. Give me all the meats, Paul. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me all the meat. And banana pepper on there too. <laughs> yes. yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Uh, top three moments in life so far oh <clears throat> like do they have to be good bad or just anything anything uh i want to say when i did a i did like a youtube video on um and i asked people to rate my singing one to ten mm-hmm. and the video got like five hundred thousand views oh, wow. and my my youtube channel just like blew up yeah. but i was scared back then still so it didn't work out how i thought mm-hmm. but that was like the first confirmation that like okay god mm-hmm. i see what you're doing here. yeah for sure, like, for sure i have the the capability i just need the development mm-hmm. um so that um me finally getting over my fear of performing mm-hmm. um and me just like continuing to go for music regardless of opinions mm-hmm. and people who are naysayers for sure for sure Heck yeah. uh let me see top top three artists mm-hmm. um Beyonce, Drake, mm. Billie Eilish. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Now I got this thing called what's worse. What's worse? Mm. I'm gonna take some things out because okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got some crazy questions on these what's worse. <laughs> what's worse? Well, um, uh, wearing fake a uh, rapper wearing fake jewelry or fake designer clothes? Mm. Um, maybe fake jewelry. Mm. I'll be wearing fake designer clothes. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From Simply Ten, you know, hey, me having a little wrong. fake uh. Fifties <laughs> and fake Louis Vuitton. Yeah. So I'd be like, give me some of that. Now, your mom, you, you, you she engaged, you engaged, you married. Uh, Relationship. She, All right. She's promising. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. What's worse, you catching your mom and her guy 
messing around oh, or God. your mom catching you messing around? Oh, that's both <laughs> both of those are terrible. Um maybe her catching me. That would just be traumatizing. <laughs> I mean uh, both would be traumatizing, but that would just not be fun. What's worse, having to wear the same pair of drawers for two weeks or the same pair of socks? Draws. <laughs> for sure. What? Draws for sure. <laughs> What's worse, being a tall dude with short arms ooh. or being a short dude with tall legs? Ooh, ooh. Wait. Because, <laughs> you know, you, this part oh, little, but the oh. way is extra long. So, like, weirdly proportioned yeah. almost? Ooh. May, oh, no. <laughs> That's hard. Maybe tall. <laughs> dude with short arms. Yeah, can't give you no hood, right? <laughs> <laughs> Little T-Rex. Yeah. What's worse, no car, nice crib, or nice car, no crib? Um. Hmm. Maybe uh, nice. No, no, no. What did you say again? No, no car, nice crib or nice crib, no car. I mean, huh? What? Wait. I, I said all oh, wrong. <laughs> Let me look about that. <laughs> like, no, huh? no car, nice crib or nice car, no crib. Oh, uh, I definitely uh, the car. I'll take the car with the nice. Okay, why is so, this making what, me confused? Which, which one would you rather have? I rather a car have a or house. a house? Okay, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's a house, a nice like, house, no what? car. <laughs> You messing me up. <laughs> uh, what's worse? Somebody talking through a movie or somebody telling you an ending? Talking through a movie. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. I hate that. Joke. That's, a, that's in my song. I'd say, shut up. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. you got a kid, hypothetically. What's worse? Not having money on Christmas for your kid mm. or not having money on their birthday? <sighs> Dang. Um... Maybe not for their birthday, because mm. that's like a celebration of their life. Everybody said that. I'm not impressing them different, because you could just make some stuff up. Especially if you got a summer true. birthday, you could take them to a party. Like, hey, have true. fun. True, that's true. <laughs> Christmas is more like gift Yeah, because you're going back to school, everybody got their stuff on, you like. Oh, you're right. Okay, maybe Christmas. Yeah. What's worse? These are sad. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse? Losing your man to your homegirl, or losing your man to your ex? Oh, to my ex. <laughs> you did a whole turnaround. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't good enough for you. Like, yeah. What's wow. worse? Find out your parents aren't your real parents or find out your siblings are adopted? Mm, maybe your parents aren't your real parents. All right. Yeah. What's worse? Find out your mate cheated through text or in action? In action. All right. What's worse? Failing at something or not starting? Um, Not starting. Okay. What's worse? Break up in person or break up over a text? Break up over text. All right, that's it. That's yeah. it. Those now, are good. You're you're a genius man. I don't know man. how you come up with this hey, stuff. Now, last thing. Too early, too late, or right on time. Um, Having sex was it too early, too late, or right on time? Um, I'd say even though it ended in a traumatic experience, it was right on time. Okay. Because it made you know the album. Mm -hmm. So, figuring out life. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. You're probably still figuring it out. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too early, too late, right on time. Or are you still figuring it out? Still figuring it out for sure. All right. First relationship, was it too early, too late, or right on time? I say right on time. All right. First job. Right on time. My first job was at nine for the Detroit Pistons. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. You, you, you <laughs> bald out here. <laughs> now, you, you, the, the relationship didn't end right. So mm -hmm. leave that messed up relationship. Did you leave it too early, too late, or right on time? Right on time. Okay. Starting music. You start music too early, too late, or right on time. Right on time. All right, the last one. Find out Santa Claus wasn't real. Oh, that was sad. <laughs> too early, too late, or right on time. Um, it was right on time because I wasn't mad about it. I yeah. found some stuff I made for him in my mom's drawer, and I was like, "What are you doing with this?" <laughs> like I'm Santa I'm like, Claus. <laughs> right. I'm like, I already knew, but this confirms it. Yeah. So yeah, it was right on time. Hey, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. I'm glad you came through. Yes, me too. Um, where can they find you on social media? Where can they find the music? All that good stuff. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Lauren Nicole Official. That's L A U R Y N N I C H O L E Official. Mm. Or you can just look up Lauren Nicole on any platform. You can find my music on Apple Music, Pandora, Spotify, whatever streaming platform is out there. Is there? Um, yeah, check me out. Now, what you want to leave some people with some kind of words? Um, you know, um, what I'm saying something they can. Yeah, can go off for a little bit. Keep going. Um, I think if it's anything I've learned, no matter what your circumstances are, you can't let your circumstances define you um, mm. or let it control whether you go or not. Because when are we ever going to have everything we need? Mm. Um, I feel like once you just start that, you know, you'll attract everything that you need to continue to do it. So for sure. just just start and, to ke and keep going. Don't mm. give up because of things that happen to you. No, I've been asking people this question. I stole it. Like I said, I stole it from uh, all the smoke. I like to, <laughs> if I steal it, I'm going to let you know I stole it. <laughs> but... If you 
who would you want to see on the podcast to get interviewed? But it gotta be somebody you help me get. Ooh. Who would you um, want to see on the on the on the on the, um, on the episode? Have you ever? Ooh. Can I say just just one person or a couple? Which however you want to do it. So we can. Do you know who Kendra up. Denise is? Kendra Denise. Did I have her? She's from Pontiac as well. She's really dope. She's starting music recently. And okay, okay, yeah. let's get Kendra on here then. Yes, Kendra yeah. Denise, um, one of my good friends, Queso Tone. Mm -hmm. He's great. Um, Nia Amani, have you ever interviewed her? <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to get Nia on the podcast, Aww. and I don't know what happened here. Hey, I had I had people around her, so okay. yeah. You talking about her right here? Yep, yep. Okay, okay, okay. She's really for sure. dope. For sure, for sure. So, uh, Kendra Denise and who's the other person? Queso Tone. Queso Tone. Yes, Q U E S O Tone. Right. Okay. Yeah, he's really dope. I did a collab with him a while ago. Really, mm -hmm. really dope person. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Niamani. You said you already did Zaire. Yep. Um, you already did Tori Scott. You already sure. did everybody I know. Yeah, yeah, that's my dog. That's my dog. All right. <laughs> so yeah, Kendra Denise though. She's cool. Well, you know, it was a pleasure having you on this episode. Thank you. Learned a lot. You know, what I'm saying. Yeah, me you, too. Hey, don't. Don't put yourself down. You on the Thank you on the you. right. You on the right path. So Thank you know you. what I'm saying. You. But it's episode one eighty four. Shout out to everybody. Lauren Nicole, best podcast in the city. If you think Heck different, yeah. then you're crazy. Period. Peace out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>